Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh. Our username stands for what will Josh do? And I present to you official Science Mod 9 support on the HTC Evo 3D. I'm gonna do it the manual way by holding volume down and power. I had to go delete the PG86 whatever zip, otherwise it would have kept asking me to update my stuff. I'm just gonna go down here, press volume down, and then press power. From here, I have Viper Run Beta 3, so I need to wipe this bad boy, and then choose Factory Reset. Bam. All your data is gone. Now we're just going to go back, choose Install, find where it's at. So we're in the download folder, we need to go back one. I have it on the root directory, right there, CM9 Shooter, posted today. And then Install. All right, we're not done just yet. We need to go back, and then you can stay where you were. You just gotta go to the Google add-ons, the latest of this video being 429, and flash that. If you do not flash this, you will not have the Google Play Store. Now we can reboot the system. And while this is booting up, I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know, I pre-ordered the HTC Evo 4G LTE. I've already paid for it. Sprint says I'll have it approximately May 17th. They're gonna try to do it before then. Ha ah, what's that? Signs your bot 9 on the HTC Evo 3D. You know notice right away that the boot animation doesn't fill the whole screen. This is my first time installing this. I have not installed this before. I pre-ordered HTC Evo 4G LTE. I'll have it before May 18th, and I will post how to root, how to install custom recovery. If CyanogenMod makes a ROM for it, I'll have a video the day it happens. I'll cover each and every little thing about the device, and I'll compare it to the Galaxy Nexus on Sprint and other future devices. Looks like we made progress. Alrighty, here we are. I'll go ahead and sign in real quick. It's taking a while for it to actually turn the Wi-Fi on if it's gonna work. All right, so here we are, like about 12 hours later. If I included in the first part of this video, I couldn't get the Wi-Fi to work, and I was reading that a lot of other people couldn't get their Wi-Fi to work either. It just sits there on the turning on screen. So if you hold down this, it takes you to the Wi-Fi settings, and it never actually turns on. This is the officially unofficial night lease. It comes with Goo Manager, which in my honest opinion is a whole lot better than ROM Manager, and I highly advise just uninstalling ROM Manager. This updates your Google add-ons, your recovery, and your ROM, all three of those. And then you can browse and download other ROMs as well, like Viper Boy. This is the ROM I was using before this video, Beta 3. It's a really good ROM, I enjoy it. This is the one that I'm on right now. That's the build I'm actually running. This will get better in time, now that we're gonna actually be seeing updated nightlies. And Goo Manager will update the ROM. You'll probably wanna download it using your computer, transfer it to like an SD card adapter because mounting does not work at the moment, I don't believe. Or you could use something like this, that you plug the micro SD card in and then hook it up to your computer through USB. Then when they get Wi-Fi working, it won't be so bad updating to the newer ROM using Goo Manager. I really like Goo Manager. It works flawlessly with Twerp Recovery, and I will have a video one day comparing Twerp to Clockwork Mod Recovery. I do not have ROM Manager or Clockwork Mod Recovery on any of my devices. This is a CyanogenMod ROM, so it comes with ROM Manager by default. It's a system app. You can't remove it unless you use Titanium Backup. See, it's red. I'm gonna uninstall it because I see no need in having ROM Manager any longer. The only way you're gonna find me with Clockwork Mod Recovery on my device is if Twerp Recovery doesn't support it just yet. 3G works just fine. I have a few floors above me in my apartment, so I have to go outside to get 3G or 4G, and that's some of the bugs. The bugs right now is that WiMAX doesn't work and the camera doesn't work. Neither does the USB storage mounting. That's why I was talking about the SD card adapter or the USB to micro SD adapter. Now, Shinzel posted on Twitter that him and Toast got WiMAX working. I replied asking if it was for the shooter, which is the Evo 3D CDMA 
version on Sprint, and he said yes. So they do have WiMAX working, they just haven't released it just yet. Which leads me to the next thing. I am perfectly fine at the moment for using just 3G. Why? Because I pre-ordered my Evo 4G LTE, and Sprint says that I'll have it before the 18th. I'll get a tracking number shortly. I live in the Kansas City area, and we don't have LTE just yet. So I'll be forced to use 3G. In fact, to be completely honest with you, I'm gonna activate my Evo 4G LTE, root it. The first day I get it, it will be rooted, and I'll have a video on it. And then I'm gonna play with it for about a week, do a review of it, and then go back to this phone probably. I'm trying to get an Epic 4G D700, and they have 4G working, the camera works, and it's got a keyboard. So I'll either use this device if they get 4G working, or I'll go to the Epic 4G. I really like WiMAX. WiMAX is way better than 3G, which I'm stuck on 3G with this phone right now, and I'm stuck on 3G when I get the Evo 4G LTE, until my city gets LTE, which Sprint says that Kansas City will get it very soon. So if you want to see Evo 4G LTE videos, and if you want to see the update on this ROM as well, please subscribe. I will not be getting rid of this device. I will eventually do more videos on the Evo Shift 4G as well. The only reason I don't use that as my daily driver, because it has WiMAX and Stable Cyanogen Mod, is because of the simple fact that I can't figure out how to get it to tether in infrastructure mode. Meaning you cannot tether the Evo Shift 4G to devices that don't accept ad hoc connections. If you know how to, please leave a comment, and I will make an updated video on the Evo Shift 4G and give you a mention. This is what would Josh do. Again, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you don't mind, give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button. It's such a small thing, but it goes a long way. It really does. Again, this is what would Josh do, and I'm out. Oh, real quick, before somebody asks, I'm using Nova Launcher. I really like it. You can actually set these. I have it on in and out. And then when I go to my app drawer, it's an accordion effect. And it's really easy to change it. I spent the $4 to get the pro version because of the simple fact that when you go to scroll effects, you only get three options, none, cube, and card stack. But with the pro version, you get all these extra ones and extra settings as well. Plus, you can have widgets right here in your dock bar. That's why it asks for root permission when you first install it. If you don't have root, you can still use it just fine. You just won't be able to put widgets down there. And that's another thing, is you can actually add widgets by holding down, kind of like you did back with Gingerbread. For example, I'm going to use Titanium Backup, and I'm going to set it to reboot the phone. And then press that. You can take this and drag it down here. Ta-da! Then if you want to reboot your device, you just press on it and choose reboot or recovery. That's unnecessary because CyanogenMod has reboot options right here. Plus you can take screenshots, put your phone on vibrate, silent, airplane mode, and etc. Again, this is what would Josh do, and now I'm out.